industries and organizations. He holds a BBA in business information systems from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana, and has a, pr a proven track record in the IT industry. With expertise in Microsoft Dynamics 365, Microsoft's Power Platform, and IT service management. Mr. Akinrele's career has seen him work in roles such as technical architect at KPMG, Microsoft Business Solutions, Malta, Malta, technical support engineer, and lead technical support officer at Bolosh Integrated Services. He actively participates in tech community events, webinars, podcasts, and blogs, sharing his knowledge through various platforms. His dedication to excellence and his eagerness to take on new challenges and opportunities are evident in his work and contributions to the IT field. His expertise and passion makes him a valuable asset in any IT-related endeavor. And it is such a privilege to be having Mr. Funchua really join us today to take this session for us. Um, at this point, I would like us to please unmute our mic and give a round of applause to Mr. Funchua as he takes the lead. You're welcome. I can't hear that. Welcome. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank you very much for the warm reception. Okay, uh, kindly let me know if you can see the content on my screen. Yes, sir. Bookie, you can stop sharing. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, I know I have um, some of my time is already eaten, so <laughs> we'd say we can make do of what we have for the next. Um, let me just say thirty-five minutes. Okay. So um, thank you very much, everyone, once again. So I'll be um, trying my very best to introduce us to um, data analysis, and we'll be looking at it from the standpoint of unleashing the power of data. And um, I'm sure many of us um, would know what data is, but would um, try as much as possible to split them into bits and the different areas and how we can um, come in and participate in it. So we'll be exploring the world of data analytics, uh, analysis, analytics rather, and um, we'll also be looking at it from the point of how we can harness insight and then um, drive decisions. So, um, like it said, my name is Funcho um, Akirili. So this is um, what I look like now. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so I work with the uh, Microsoft Business Solutions um, here in Malta and um, to the agenda straight up. So I'll be introducing us to data analytics. We'll be looking at the types of data analytics that we have. Also, we're going to be looking at the processes that is involved in data analy analytics. Then we we'll would have um, a Q&A session, then we we'll would have um, a conclusion. So oh, it's it's going to be a very interesting um, right for each and every one of us. So before we get into introducing data analytics, um, so just let me explain what data is in its um, in its um, list form. So data is basically um, any form of, um, I wouldn't say information because combination of data forms information. So data contains raw fact. OK, raw fact, it could be in numerical values, it could be in words, it could be in any form, it could be files. OK, all of those come together to form your data. So data are raw fact that you get to bring together to then begin making sense out of those um, data. So basically everything you do, your life on a day to day basis is generating data. OK, as you are waking up, um, it's you are generating data because you're having a wake up time as you're going to the office, you have a resumption time. Those 
lead to lead to um, fact, raw fact that we are seeing. They are actually um, data. So that's why you can actually look at someone's. Um, if, if you most of us today with our smartphones, you can get to see things like idle times summary of your entire week and you see what apps you spend most of your time on. All of those are basic um, data that were being gathered and which formed the entire um, summary that you are currently seeing. So when we talk about analyzing of those set of data, it simply means that you are going through the process of collecting those data, okay, in any form, either structured or unstructured. Structured meaning that those data could actually be in a database somewhere. It could, it, that means your data are stored in rows and columns. And some unstructured data, it could just be words, text, or even files that you then need to also connect um, to. So data analytics is the process of examining, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data so that you can extract meaningful insights, you can identify patterns, and also you can notice some trends, okay? It involves using various techniques, which we'll discuss some of those techniques in this um, training. And also there are tools that you can get to use to make um, informed uh, decisions. So now we've been able to establish that data are raw fact, and we generate this data on day-to-day -day basis, depending on what we do or what business we are in. So every of us are part of an ecosystem today of data um, generation. And as it stands now, this is a sector that I can boldly tell you that even in the next 50 years, 100 years to come, it's a very viable sector. Like you can actually take a career in this and you will continue to be prospectful every time of the year as as the data world transitions you also transition um, with it so there are some importance that we need to take away from data analytics in today's world because data analytics is evolving it's not what it used to be um, years back like 50 years ago 20 years ago even last year it's very much um, evolving and data analytics is playing a pivotal role okay in modern society and uh, part of those roles are around um, making informed decisions so with data analytics now you can't make decision based on assumptions okay because everything is data driven you have your insights and this gives either you as an individual or your organization okay to make decision that would lead to better um, outcomes also you will be able to risk um, mitigation whereby you get to analyze data that helps you to identify risks and devise strategies to minimize those um, risks. So it means with data that you generate, you can get to know what to do. You can preempt, okay, based on the fact that you currently um, have at hand. Then also we have cost optimization. So for um, many of us that, so for like, for someone like me, I'll use myself as example most of the time. So um, of recent, I said, okay, I want to start keeping track of my, um, of my monthly budget, my monthly um, allowance, the salary and everything. And I saw that I could actually save more, invest more, and cut down on some certain things, okay? But I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have some data. So I have passed data of the amount I've taken for Uber, the amount I've spent on groceries. I have a trend, okay, over a period of time. I have those data. So the apps that you get to use, the, 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 the bank statements that you have, those are your data points, okay? Those are your data points. So I'm talking from a, pers a personal perspective. If it's for organization as well, it can be that, okay? It can be that as well. So you can get to op um, optimize our costs by analyzing things like, for instance, resource allocation. And in my own case, it was, um, not resource allocation, but allocation based on my needs, okay? And also you get to save cost. And if your business is looking at um, resource allocation al analyzing, then it means that you can also save costs and improve um, efficiency. We also have um, objective decision-making, 
which is um you with your data you'll be able to have um, a reduced uh, reliance on assumptions and promote fact based um choices many investment companies they always utilize data okay like the day to day the individuals there they walk and breathe data some other point that i didn't bring up on the slide is um things around productivity okay so timely data access allows proactive responses to changing situations okay also you can have a reduced bias you know some of us might want to be biased with some decision making but when you see the data when you see the fact you won't be able to make decision based on biasness but you make a decision based on the fact that you have and people say numbers don't lie okay but try as much as possible not to falsify the numbers because if falsify if numbers are falsified then definitely the numbers would lie at the end of the day so um that's where cleaning of the data and those other ones um would actually um come in so in looking at the um, objectives or the types of data analytics that we have there are four of them okay so we've mentioned or we've described what data is what data analytics is and also now we've seen the importance of data analytics so how can we start arriving at making those informed decisions how can we get to that point so these are the types of data analytics process that are out there okay or the types of data analytics that are out there so one is that descriptive analytics now i remember when i was in um, the university um we used um some statistical tool um now i don't know if it has changed it used to be um spss it was an SPSS. ibm yes. yes spss it was an ibm tool and That's today true. yeah i'm sure today many of us are using some other tools like my younger brother who is in Funab just spoke to me. I said, oh, is he X SPSS you guys are using? He said, no, it's no SPSS. I was like, oh, really? So the tools are also changing, okay? The tools are changing. So some of these tools, they lend themselves to the different techniques that are out there. So we have the descriptive analytics. And when we talk about descriptive analytics, it's talking about understanding historical data okay and identifying patterns so when you want to have descriptive analytics it means you are looking at okay um how many years ago you are taking data of not just the current year you are taking data of several prior years or several prior months to be able to identify some patterns so for instance i picked up my balance sheet and uh, the organization picked up their balance sheet and they want to identify what is or, or the trend of consumption of let's say f or, or fuel or gas within the organization and i'm sure petrol would be one that would be on um the rise so we also have um diagnostic anal analytics it's different from descriptive we'll be looking at them we'll be breaking them in silos as we go um further down the line so diagnostics is more like you are investigating okay it's more like you are investigating finding um a root cause okay root cause analytics so here yeah, you are going to be looking at a certain event that occurred okay you are looking out for trends or identifying a root cause for a certain event which occurred we also have um prescriptive um, analytics uh, one second Okay, so we also have um, prescriptive um, analytics and the prescriptive, uh, prescriptive analytics is around you being able to forecast. Okay, forecasting future trends based on those historical data that you received from descriptive analytics. So in a way, one thing I've noticed over the time, over the years, is that one of these um, types of analytics will lead to another. OK, you can start with an investigative, anal uh, which is a, di a diagnostic analytics. But at the end of the day, you will need to move on to the other one. So we have then the last one here is prescriptive um, analytics. OK, so predictive, you are forecasting future. Then prescriptive is then you are being proactive. So you are now saying, OK, we've identified what went wrong. Now, how can we then um, mitigate some of these um, occurrences? So pres prescriptive analytics is going to be based on you being able to recommend, OK, the actions that you want to achieve um, a desired outcome um, on. 
Okay, so moving on to the next, so we'll be picking them one after the other. So we'll be starting first with descriptive um, analytics. So descriptive analytics, this involves the process of analyzing historical data like year, month, okay, you've been able to drill down and then um, you are understanding trends in order for you to be able to evaluate some metrics over time. And this provides insights into past behaviors, but does not predict future events or trend. So you are just doing a descriptive to just gather information, gather the fact, okay? You are not proposing a solution, which is why I said you can start from a certain type of um, analytics and then you evolve into the other uh, ones. So an example here is you having a sales report that shows um, revenue and expenses over a period of time. Now, that analytics that you have regarding your sales um, report, okay, or, with, or regarding the organization's revenue on sales, you would definitely identify trends in it, okay? You would definitely identify trends in it, but at the point of being descriptive, you are not going to be um, making any suggestions at that point. So with these, you can use visualizations. OK, so if you are using Power BI, we'll be getting to the two parts. So I'll be asking some questions at, at the end also. <laughs> so kindly take note of some of the things I'm making mention of. So I've made mention of one statistical tool, uh, which is um, SPSS by IBM. Then the second one is um, Power BI, OK, by Microsoft. So the Power BI, for instance, or the SPSS, um, any of the tools that you are using, they definitely will have some visualization options for you because with these visuals is what will make your data come to life. OK, with data, I mean, with the visuals, you get to understand your data better. You can't make much sense of your data without visualizations. So you need things like your bar chart, your maps, your Gantt chart your um your line graph okay either of those tools i mean those visuals to help depict um your data so when you're working with descriptive analytics these are the type of visualization techniques that you use you use the bar chart to rep represent the different categories you can use a line graph to show trend you know line graph you have your bar and then it shows the different trends then also you can use a pie chart OK, to depict some parts so you can use this um, interchangeably depending on the needs of the business at that particular point in time. So we have diagnostic um, analysis, which is majorly around root cause. When you hear diagnostic, it means that we want to find out why this happened, what caused this to happen. OK, so with diagnostic analytics, it's um, a crucial aspect of data analysis that delves into cost of trends now not just trends okay but what cost the trends so currently we know um the weather is rapidly changing over um many um, regions of the world right now and we are looking at global warming okay now we've moved past the stage of descriptive analytics okay identifying how many rainfall we have in january how many we have all over the year um, across the year now we've moved to the point of okay this is the trend is it increasing is it decreasing is the number of rain we're having increasing is it decreasing at the end of the day we are saying okay let's now find the root cause okay let's begin to find the root cause okay the ozone layer okay let's reduce burning let's preach global emissions those are the results of some analytics that were being carried out OK, so even today, you as an individual, you can sit back and then think of um, a problem and then gather facts on those problems. Then you can begin to prefer solution. So there are several problems out there today and you can actually sit down to think of some that you can actually find or prefer solution to because data is everywhere. You can even get data online. You can get data um, online. So with diagnostic analytics. So it um, serves as um, a logical progression after descriptive analytics. So after descriptive analytics, the next thing would definitely be diagnostic analytics because we want to know the why, 
Okay, and this helps you to identify trends, but not explain why they occur. So it lets you explore the diagnostic analytics in more details. So in looking at the root cause analysis, we have um, about two key concepts here. It could be more than this, but these are like the basic ones. So we have the hypothesis testing and we have the correlation versus uh, causation. So when we say hypothesis testing, it is the statistical process that helps prove or disprove assumptions, okay, in the diagnostics um, analysis. Then for the hypothesis, they are historical as well, oriented. That is, for example, this month's sale declined was caused by a recent price increase, okay? This month's sale um, went up by, let's say, 50% because it is summer. So definitely in summer, you have more people in a certain region, okay? So if it's correlation versus um, causation, then you're looking at when exploring relationships between some certain variables. So it means you have some variables that you are using to compare, okay? And um, it's essential to differentiate between correlation, which is a related movement, and then a causation, which is um, the actual cost and effect um, kind of relationship on that um, analytics or the data that you're working um, on. So this is an example of a case study, but let me just move to the sales trends one. So for time series um, sales data, so time series meaning that there are ranges of sales over a period of time, and that's the data that you're analyzing. And here, the diagnostic analysis is going to reveal why sales increased or decreased during a specific year, okay? During a specific year. Now, if we pick sales, um, if a times series for sales data from 2020, of let's say from 2019 to 2024, I'm sure that you would see that in year 2020, there would be a certain decrease, and you can actually tell the root cause for why sales decreased in that particular year because of the major pandemic. Okay, so that's um, an example. So the root cause analysis, it helps you to identify and eliminate fundamental um, underlying issues um, in processes or in events. So for predictive analytics, so we've looked at um, descriptive and we've looked at diagnostics. So are there any questions before I move on to predictive and prescriptive? Any question? on this, uh, descriptive and um, diagnostic analytics. Any question? None from my end. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we'll move on now to the prescriptive um, analytics uh, side of things. So with prescriptive analytics, here I have said um, it's um, a powerful tool that leverages historical data, okay, statistical algorithms, and machine learning techniques to forecast future outcomes. So this is like combining both descriptive, diagnostic, and then also some advanced techniques in order to then say, okay, I think in the future, this might be what could happen. I'm sure some of us would have watched some movies like 2024 um, that predicted that the world will end this year, things like that, or end of the world or 2020, those kind of movies. And most of, or some of those are actually based on the data that was gathered over the years, okay? because um, of what the climate is actually doing, global warming and everything. So that's why you see um, many organizations, many countries trying to ensure that they go green in this present um, era. That is use electric vehicle, reduce carbon emission, um, reduce waste, um, 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 reduce waste um, in the open areas and also use um, recyclable materials for most of the things. Now, all of those, the world didn't just arrive at it, okay? It was based on some predictions, based on the data, historical data that we gathered over the years, and that led to making some um, in decisions um, to ensure that we prevent uh, some of those um, occurrences. So in terms of um, predictive analysis still, 
it involves forecasting. That's just the major thing. So it could be business forecasting, helping your organization to look at the sales trend, then predict how the trends in coming years can be. This is what the likes of Microsoft, Google, Amazon, this is what they get to use. And you would see that year in, year out, they don't get to have a decrease in revenue because they notice that so far we keep diversifying portfolios, we have more chances of scaling up um, our revenue and they tend to do that. And it's been working over the years. That's why you see that there is no year that goes by that Microsoft or either of all these organizations wouldn't release new product. Okay. Year in, year out, iPhone and or Apple ensures they release new brands, new brands, new brands, because they know that the new um, portfolios will bring about um, more um, business to them, which would increase revenue. And this is a fact. Okay. It's been proven. There is a data to show um, for it. And also you'd notice that on some of those trends, like um, if you get to some certain parts of the world today, you would see that, um, for instance, in the December period, you have um, more revenues. Why is that? It's not only because it's festive season, but it's because in those festive seasons, they bring or let's say they do what we call um, off sales. Okay. They, they do price slash, they reduce, um, they give discount a lot. They say holiday seasons, Black Friday, and they notice that the sales on those days increases. This has been a trend. So don't expect it to stop because why it's been predicted that it will happen and it's happening. Okay. So it could be in the healthcare system as well, whereby you can have predictive models which can estimate um, radio emissions, I mean, re readmissions uh, rate, um, disease outbreaks, and even um, treatment um, effectiveness based on what has happened over time. I think one of the major uh, predictive um, analytics uh, model um, was um, in the healthcare was with childcare, which is um, if you if hands are washed, they notice that when hands are washed uh, before baby delivery the baby has a higher chances of survival. And over the years, it's been done, okay? The cleaner the facility and the environment, the more likely likelihood that the baby gets to survive. Now that is already at an 100% um, rate. So you can actually have these predictive um, models ensuring this. It can also happen in the marketing world or even in the manufacturing world, regardless of the sector that you are currently playing in. And, the good thing is if you are not playing in any sector at the moment, so far you have your laptop, you have your tablet devices and you have access to data, you can actually choose a market of your choice and explore. Okay, There are sample data everywhere that you can actually um, play with. So we have some machine um, learning um, algorithms. Awesome. So we have some machine learning um, algorithms also that you can get to leverage in having the predictive model, okay, forecast um, uh, future events. So we have the regression models, okay. There are several types of it that we won't go in depth into. We have the decision tree, which is going to definitely be an hierarchy kind of model. We have um, a time series as well, model. Then we have um, a neural um, network. So at this point, then you start looking at, okay, I think we need to start looking into using um, some scripting or some custom code at this point. So let's then look at prescriptive um, analytics. And I think from here, we would move on to um, some other um, aspect of the analytics um, world. So for prescriptive analytics, now we've seen what descriptive does. It helps us look into the historical data and then gather the um, the, the result, and then we have diagnostics that would then help us to um, um, diagnostics would help us to uh, find the root cause of those trends that we've identified, and then we look at predictive, which helps us to forecast. And now prescriptive is what most organizations ride on today. Many organizations out there they ride on the pre prescriptive model because we've known the the what, we've known the when. We've known the why, but can we now know the how, okay? That is, how can we solve this? How can we mitigate this? So that's why you see that many um, 
um, systems are coming in place to enforce automations and autonomy systems. Like you having AI to be able to ensure that um, your vehicles don't get get have accidents again, okay? So those are the hows. How can we make this up? How can we um, prevent these from happening? Okay, so the prescriptive analytics goes beyond descriptive and predictive analytics, but not only explaining what happened and what might happen, but also recommending specific actions to achieve the desired um, outcomes. Okay, so in doing this, we have some optimizing techniques, um, the linear programming, okay, and this you would find used in production and transportation, like the um, scenarios I just painted, you'd find them in this um, world. We have the integer uh, programming as well, whereby you are extending linear programming to undo some variables, okay, and then we have um, non-linear programming um, as well. These are some techniques that you still need to dive into fully in order to understand the workings of how you can leverage these techniques with some certain tools that we'll be looking at in making or having um, a, pre a prescriptive um, model. So some real world implementation where this has been done um, in a supply chain um, system or organization dealing with supply chain. So the operation of supply chain is optimized uh, when predictive analysis is brought in to help determine um, optimal inventory levels, production schedules, and then distribution route. Um, I, I play more in the space of the Microsoft business solutions. And in that space, we deal more with um, low code, um, no code um, platform in order to create um, business, um, specific business solutions or custom business um, solutions. And there is one of the um, tools that we get to use. It's called um, process mining. And the process mining is more like a prescriptive analytics kind of tool because with process mining you can actually have it run on your um, staff's laptops or their devices and it tracks the various activities that they get to do so if for instance we have an healthcare system and the patient needs to come in and log a request. After logging the request, they need to book an appointment with a doctor. After booking an appointment, based on the severity of the issue, if they need an operation immediately, what needs to be done? If they don't need an operation, where do they take them to? What's the process up until when they are discharged? Now, there could be bottlenecks in the system that can be identified, okay? And with the usage of things like process, tools like process mining, with it's in Power Automate, you can actually have the trend identified. So it's going to, that can, that tool can actually let you know, okay, at this point, this is effective, this, this is an effective um, um, operation. This is an effective um, engagement. This path um, or this process rather, this process is fine. From this process to this point is fine. Taking the patient to ICUs are fine. But at the point of administering drugs, then that there might be a bottleneck identified. So this tool now devices that, okay, this part needs to be optimized. And when you have this optimized, you get this result, you get this result, you get that result. Okay. So it goes a long way, okay, in ensuring that um, the business gets its um, desired outcome based on the previous um, trend. So for if it's um, in an energy grid kind of management system also, you can optimize um, energy production and even distribution. And I think um, Lagos State is currently on this. Even Nigeria at large is currently um, on this um, trajectory um, as we currently um, speak. Now, the types of analytics processes that we have. So we've talked about the types of um, data analytics that we have. Then we have some processes that are involved, okay? And these processes, they are the same everywhere, regardless of the tool that you are using, okay? They are the same everywhere. So first and first, you must know where your data is located, okay? You must be able to identify where your data currently um, is. Now, after identifying your data location, you can then proceed to what? Connecting to those data. So if you are using Power BI, for example, which is a very um, enterprise-grade um, uh, data analytics tool. 
So you can connect to multiple data sources. Those data sources, they don't need to be related. They can be unrelated. That's one amazing thing about Power BI as well. And then you can connect to those data. So you need to collect the data, which is like the initial step. So you ensure you have the relevant data. The data is comprehensive enough. And then you proceed to data cleaning. Before you analyze, you don't want, for instance, some columns to be missing. You don't want null values in your report. You don't want um, accounts with no records. So because all of those will affect the outcome of your analysis, OK? It's going to affect the outcome of your analysis. So you need to perform some data cleaning. It's very crucial that you do that. Then you can proceed to then analyzing your data. So if it's descriptive, it is, if it is diagnostic, then you can begin your analysis. And then you get to use um, visualizations or your charts, okay? So once you have um, analyzed the data, you've interpreted your findings, then you can use your line graphs, your maps, your bar charts to then show, okay? Looking at, um, I think there's a saying that says, um, image speaks louder than um, than words or than voice. So if you get to look at an image, uh, that is, you get to understand what exactly is happening um, with, the, um, with the data or the system that you fetched those data are from. Then after that, you proceed to what? To making your decision, okay? You proceed to making your decision. Now, what I've noticed is in the career part that is involved in this, you might not be involved in this last section, okay? Because anyone who will be involved in decision making, it means you must be in either uh, mid-management level or you are in the management level or top management level. So many of the, um, the the career paths here, okay, will definitely start from you being able to collect the data, clean the data, and then you analyze and use visuals to depict those um, data. So the majority of the skills out there would be around this, okay? This decision making is a whole different ball game um, entirely because you have to consider some other factors that even the data analyst or the data scientist is not aware of, okay? So even if um, a report about global warming is brought now, okay, the scientists can make a decision. It has to be the World Health Organization that would make a decision or the, um, the body in charge of um, the geographical um, space or the, the, the geo entirely that makes that um, decision. So some tools, um, like I already mentioned, Power BI is one of them. We have um, Tableau. Yes, Tableau is another one, but I would always put Power BI at top and Microsoft, um, I'm, I'm Microsoft specific. So I'll put um, Microsoft at the top. We have Tableau, we have um, ClickSense, we have um, Zoho Analytics, uh, we have, um, which one again? Um, we have um, the SPSS um, too, but the Power BI, I would say you should go for because one, it's free, so you can actually start um, using it. You can download it for free and begin um, using um, using it. Then also there is um, the use of Python programming language. So if there is a need for you to write some logics or to implement some logics in your analytic steps, then you need to look at Python programming or R. Those are the uh, programming language that would, I would say that lend more and to help you in ensuring that your analytics journey is um, very um, smooth. But this is not, a, if it's the fundamental, then you can just be learning it just to have a knowledge of it. But at the fundamental level, collecting your data, you necessarily don't need um, the Python um, at those um, stage. So if you are talking about the data visualization platforms also, the Power BI, these are also used for the visualizations, okay? Um, the Tableau also makes um, use of these. We have um, the sense also, we have um, Fusion Charts, we have Info, Infogram and several um, others of them in the data visualization platform. But Power BI also, pops the chart in those ones. So you can use Power BI for both enterprise um, grade analytics or even um, um, very small scale um, analytics. So 
there are some challenges that you would face, okay, um, no doubt, when it comes to data analytics. And one of the major challenges is with accurate data, okay, is with accurate data. If your data is not accurate, if your data is not reliable and cons consistent, then it would cause an issue. It's, it, it's going to lead to a, a, a big problem at the end of the day, okay, because any decision made from the wrong data, okay, then would cause a wrong effect. So it's just um, as simple as that. Then you would also need to think of what impact that co data quality, quality issue would have, which is um, if, if it's um, wrong data, then the adverse effect of it, you need to consider all of those and also think of mitigation. So you need to make, you need to make plans for ensuring that your data are checked before and they are cleansed before you then begin to use them inside of your um, analytics um, processes. Also, we have data privacy and security concerns. This alone is a career on its own <laughs> because why? Data privacy, security concerns evolve not around just your organization's data policy, it evolves around GDPR, that's the General Data Protection Regulation. Um, also, it evolves around the region where you are located because you also need to ensure that your data um, privacy or the policies that you have are in concurrent with that of the geolocation you are. If it's uh, if you're working in the banking sector, there are kind of some there are kind of data that you shouldn't keep for I think more than ten years in the bank. So all of these bodies, institutions, they have their policies and those policies should be adhered to, okay? Those policies should be adhered to because a lot of companies today are getting fined. Um, I think about in 2000 and was it 2019, Facebook faced um, a charge in US on data privacy. Currently, TikTok is undergoing the same thing. So there are lots of companies that are coming under the microscope it regards data privacy and security. So ensure that you are collecting the, 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 the right data, okay, and you are not keeping them for longer than expected based on the privacy policy in that body or in that region or institution. Then we have talent shortage. So at, as we speak, there's a lot of demand. I was speaking to a colleague of um, a brother of mine not too long and there are so many opportunities out there, but the individual, the, the how do they say it? The harvest is plenty, but liberals are few. And it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing. There is a lot of need for data analysts out there. There is a lot of need for data scientists out there. Um, it, 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 it can't go out of, out of extinct because the data generated year in, year out is not, it's in an exponential rate, like you can measure it. It's so high when we look at the data being generated and we need people to mine this data. We need people to break this data down, help us identify these trends and then make sense um, of it. So some of the future trends are in data analytics involve around artificial intelligence integration. So today we have Copilot, we have ChatGPT, GPT-4, we have, um, um, I think um, Apple has, Google has their, own, um, has their own AI. So AI is actually coming into every corporation. So meaning that whatever data you're analyzing today, you can leverage AI. So if you are learning data analytics now, you can also pick up a career path in understanding AI as to how you can have it with um, the, with data analytics. They go hand in hand as we speak at the moment. Also, we have um, edge computing for real time um, analytics, we have that as well. So there's a lot of benefits with, um, for, like for, let me dwell on the AI more because um, I play more in that space. So for AI, it means that you can automate your processes, okay? You can automate any repetitive tasks. You would get to save time because you wouldn't be collecting the data every time. You can build an automation system that collects the data, check if there are values that are not required spools them off or send those records back to the people to populate the right information. You can have that running um, in the background and you are saving time, you are saving um, a lot of resources as well when you bring um, AI integration into data um, analytics. So we have um, edge computing, um, which is majorly around real-time 
um, analytics. So these you would need to work with or have um, a cloud um, understanding how the cloud technology works. OK, that's um, for instance, you are working with IoT devices. You know, today we have um, Echo Dot. You can speak to your TV to go off. You can speak to your Echo Dot um, device to turn on your light and things. So those are also generating data. IoT um, are generating data. Um, auto, um, electric vehicles are also one. And the autonomous ones are majorly playing in edge computing. Um, yep, and edge computing. Then we have um, the ethics and responsible data usage. So in the previous slide, you would notice that we spoke about um, data privacy and policy. So there is also um, the need to for some organizations to have the right to use some data that they are collecting. That's why you'd notice that many applications you install today, majorly on the iOS, Apple, I've, I haven't seen much on Android, you get the notification after installing those apps that should you allow the application to track activities in your device. So you can tell it to do, do you, can, you can select no, okay? So these are part of what we've been able to see that in the future trend, and this is going to come a lot more. OK, it's going to come a lot more because we need to consider the ethical uh, considerations um, in data analytics so that the wrong data are not uh, in the wrong in, in the hands of the wrong people. And also um, it is used responsibly and also there is the privacy is there and also there is fairness in it and also there is transparency as well. So these are the future trends. So there is a lot that data analytics has to offer. We can't even explore everything um, in this today's um, training. So a recap on some of the key, key, key points that we've looked at. So we've looked at descriptive analytics, um, summarizes historical data to understand what have happened. Then also diagnostics, which helps us identify root cause by investigating the reasons for some certain um, trends. And also we have the predictive analytics, helping us to forecast the outcomes um, using some machine learning and advanced um, techniques. Then we have um, the prescriptive analytics, which then helps us to recommend um, the um, optional actions that can be taken to prevent some certain um, event. Then AI integration, edge computing, these are the future, um, and also ethics and responsibility, the future trends. Then there are also lots of importance, but the major one are the, the fact that decision needs to be made, okay? But these decisions need to be informed um, decisions. Informed decisions need to be made. So encouragement for future exp um, exploration. So um, I would admonish us that we should dive deeper, okay, into the, some of the specific topics that um, could be of interest to you as you've seen in the uh, previous um, slide. Then continue learning about the emerging tools. Ensure Power BI, Microsoft Fabric, those are there for you to then leverage, okay? Also techniques and ethical practices. So in everything you do around data, ensure you are ethical, okay? Ensure you are ethical. And also remember that data analytics is a dynamic field stay curious and keep exploring then in your data journey also i'll advise you to embrace curiosity learn continuously and let insight guide your path so are there any questions before we call it today any question yes i have a question okay all right thank you so very much for the teaching it's actually very deep thank you so much because my my knowledge of that analysis before was just like okay microsoft excel and that is, but now i could see that okay there is more to it and it's actually spun through um, a lot thank you so much so um is there any difference between data analytics and data analysis Okay, so data analysis, I think it's, how will I put it? So analytics is like, um, I'll say the umbrella, then analysis is like the practice. 
So basically, there isn't any major difference between the two. So it's like just uh, saying, okay, this is um, data analytics. This is everything the data analysis analytics is about. Then data analysis. Then okay, let's then go do something. Let's then practice this out. So really, there isn't much of a difference between the two. Okay. And you. in some cases, you find people using it interchangeably. All right, thank you, sir. Thank okay, you. thank you. Any other question? Okay, so in the absence of any, so thank you very much. Um, it's been a wonderful time with each and every one of us, and I trust we gained something. And um, thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for the knowledge shared. So insightful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the session. Um, personally, I learned a whole lot, maybe because I'm having interest in data analytics and um, you literally simplified it. I want to go further to, um, you kind of created the hunger in me to want to go further to learn more about data analytics. And I want to say thank you so Thank you, thank you too. Deep presentation. Um, I'm sure every one of us on this call must have gotten one or two things that after now we would, we would want to work with. And you know, the beautiful thing about data analytics. Uh, I think I lost you. Um, I yes. can't hear. Is it just me? You can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, now. um, a call keeps coming in. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, a call keeps coming in. All right, so I was saying that um, thank you for your time and for taking out time to make out this presentation. I really do appreciate it. Um, I feel like me that has. Can you hear me? Actually, it keeps going and coming, going and coming, but I'm I, so I, yes, I can hear you now. Calling despite ending the call. So sorry. I'm just wrapping up now. So I'm just data. I, I can't hear you again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. So I was you can just type in the chat, okay. Okay, someone okay, like go me ahead. that has interest in data analytics, you have done um, okay. created more hunger for me to dive deeper into it because you literally simplified the entire concept. And the beautiful thing about data analytics is it's not career restricted. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone yeah. can apply it into their career. So for someone like me who is in HR, I can clearly apply it into my field. And um, Definitely, thank you yes. so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for your time. We are truly grateful. And I would like everyone to please unmute their mic to say a big thank you to Mr. Funcho as we wrap up the session. Please unmute your mic and say thank, thank you, you, Mr. Funcho. Wow. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay, everyone. Thank you. So thank, thank you once again me. for joining. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining the session. Uh, we truly, truly hope that we're more than this, but I can't even explain what is going on. But the beautiful thing is for those of us who attended, it was worth the time. So thank you once again, everyone, and do enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye.